Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how I make my Destiny 2 videos. Haha, <laughs> 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 my content is just made of killing teammates. <laughs> Everything from recording to editing to... Well, no, just those two things. Oh, how to record and how to edit. And we're going to use one of my more recent videos as an example because I recorded the whole editing process for us to look back at. It's a video that was called The Most Dysfunctional Raid Team in Destiny 2. That's, uh, that's what we're doing today. We're just going to take uh, a look behind the curtains and see what's going on. Hello, I'm Sleepy and I like fucking minus. Now, I don't think that this video will be very interesting for a lot of you, but uh, recently I've been getting a lot of messages from both aspiring content creators or even already established big ones uh, that ask me how I do certain things or how I go about my editing. And I replied to quite a few already, but I figure if there's gonna be a lot of these messages coming in all the time, why not simply just make a video about how I make my videos? I'll show you everything that you need to know so you too can become a B tier YouTuber. Thanks, Social Blade appreciate it. The first step to making a video is of course to record footage, obviously. And as a surprise to probably absolutely no one, a good video starts with a good recording. That's of course not always true. Uh, you can make good videos with bad recordings, but a good recording definitely helps. Not just because it's gonna look better on YouTube, but also because of the freedom that it gives you, as I'll show you in this video. In terms of the actual video quality, I don't think I do anything special. I use the software OBS in combination with the latest NVENC encoder that comes with uh, the NVIDIA graphics cards. And I simply put the settings in OBS to what the maximum settings are in the Shadowplay app, which is the app that comes with uh, NVIDIA graphics cards. The Shadowplay app uses a variable bitrate up to 130,000 kilobit per second, if you set it to 4K that is. So that's what I use in OBS as well. I don't record in 4K in OBS, I record in 1440p, but I still use the 130,000 kilobits per second as my recording standard. And I feel that this is a good middle ground between quality and file size. Now, of course, I do have a 2080 Ti and Destiny 2 is not the most demanding game to run on PC. However, if you're just gonna copy these settings and then notice that you have stutters in the recorded footage, oftentimes that's because the GPU is overloaded. The game that you're playing is using all of the GPU power and you simply can't record at the settings that you want to record at and also play at max settings or at that FPS. The way to solve that issue is very easy. All you have to do is limit your frames in game. I play Destiny in 1440p and if I simply limit my frames to 120 to 140 in game, the GPU never really maxes out. It never even reaches 90%, which means that I'll rarely get freezes in the recording because the GPU is never maxed out. But of course, if you're playing a different game, and if you're playing on different settings and recording with different settings, you're gonna have to tweak this for yourself. Simply go in game and make sure that your GPU is not using more than 80 to 85%. Just keep that as a threshold and you should always have clean recordings. So that's how you get a uh, smooth footage, but that's only one thing, because what's probably even more important is the audio. And this is the reason that I use OBS in combination with NVENC instead of just the Shadowplay software. Because my recordings, they have three different audio channels. We have the game sound, I have my own mic, and then I also have a separate channel for TeamSpeak or Discord. On top of that, I also have the game running with no music and no voice volume, so that the channel that's recording the gameplay sound only has the things such as the bullet sounds and whatnot. This is because if I want there to be music in my videos, I can not only simply add back the original music by ripping it off YouTube, usually there's a lot of channels who uh, rip Destiny 2 music from the game and I then rip that off YouTube to put it back in my videos if I see fit and I can do the same for the voice lines, right? I can just rip that off YouTube and edit it back in but I would never be able to delete it if it were the other way around so with the original music and the original voice lines not being there I can also get more creative and add my own music to it without things getting muddy this does mean that I always have to go back and add in the things such as the ghost yelling Guardian down if somebody dies. Okay, 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 no. Alright, now. Oh, it's the Wither Hordes. Guardian down. Oh, it's the Wither Hordes. But I've got a way to make that a lot smoother. And in turn, it also allows me to change the timing of the ghost saying Guardian down. Uh, or even the tone, or even edit it a little bit. Which then, in turn, can improve the video. Okay, okay, no. Alright, now. 
Guardian down. Okay, who's what? using this word again? I didn't use it. I really think that having the right audio set up is the single most important thing about your recording. And that's why I want to just make really clear that you should try to get as much separation of audio lanes as possible because it will give you a lot more freedom down the line to do whatever you want. And you'll soon see how much of a difference it can make. Now, of course, there are many, many different ways to get a clean three lane audio recording. Uh, you can use preamps, you can use free software such as Voice Meter Banana, and there are a ton of different tutorials online on YouTube and how to get that. Personally, I have a headset that allows me to do that. I have a SteelSeries Artis 7 wireless headset that has two different channels built in, a game channel and a chat channel. So I can just route one of those through TeamSpeak and then use the other one for my game sound. This way I don't have to have any extra software or any extra preamps. It's a really amateuristic solution, but it keeps things very simple for me and I'm just gonna keep using it as long as it works. And I believe that this works for every headset that has like a knob on it that lets you adjust the game and the sound from your uh, TeamSpeak or party chat separately. Every headset that has that feature probably has two different audio channels that you can separate in different software as well. So let's say you've got the recording, uh, you've got the recording right, you've played some games, you recorded some footage, you got some funny moments or some interesting moments, you drag it into Premiere or whatever editing software you like to use, DaVinci Resolve, uh, Sony Vegas Pro, it all, it all works. Maybe uh, Windows Live Movie Maker, perhaps. I don't judge. Anyway, you've got all your footage, you drag it in, and now you're stuck because how do I turn this raw footage into an entertaining video? This is probably the hardest part of editing. Oftentimes, even when hiring professional editors, you'll find that a lot of people usually know what all the buttons in the editor do. They usually know how to put something together. They know what most of the effects do, but people can oftentimes just not be quite sure where to start or how to turn it into a proper video. So that's really what I want to talk about today. This video is not necessarily going to be a tutorial on how to use Premiere, right? Uh, what the buttons do, what the effects do, how to cut up some footage. I'm sort of assuming that a lot of people already know how the software works. And I just want to really talk about the process of turning raw footage into an entertaining video. If you want to learn about how Premiere or After Effects works, then there are like a million different tutorials online. I'm self-taught from all the tutorials that I could find online. So I don't feel like I have to add even more messy tutorials to the whole library that's out there. And also for the purposes of this video, I will be using Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects and Adobe Audition. Again, you can use whatever you want, but this is what I work with. So this is what I will be using for the tutorial video, which means that there are also going to be some quirks or some features that are specific to the Adobe uh, software. Uh, if you're using another editor, obviously these things are not going to apply to you. And the first one of those weird things with the Adobe software is that importing three audio lane footage, especially when that footage is over an hour or two hours or three hours long, uh, can take quite a while. The thing is with Premiere is that as soon as you import footage, it tries to create these media files, which are necessary to display the wavelength of the audio lanes. And it tries to recreate that every time you import a file for the first time. Uh, and when you have three audio lanes, that just takes a really long time. And there's not really much else you can do other than just wait. And while it's doing that, it can even look like Premiere is locking up or freezing because there's just this progress bar and it's not doing anything. And if you rapidly click the mouse, it will say Premiere not responding. But all you have to do here is literally just wait. And if you have a lot of files, like I'm talking hours and hours and hours of hours of files, and you all import them with three lane audio into Premiere, it can probably take up to half an hour to 45 minutes to create all of these media files and you just can't do anything. A lot of people think right here that their PC is too slow for Premiere or anything. I've actually tried to hire editors, sent them the footage and they imported the footage and they said, oh, uh, Premiere is just freezing up. I can't really do anything. That's just Premiere creating the audio files. And if you're ever unsure whether Premiere locked up when you try to import the footage, you can go to the task manager and check the disk usage. If Premiere is busy reading or writing files, uh, on the disk, then it's creating media files and you're just gonna have to wait. Once you're inside the editor and all the footage is loaded in, uh, we can start with the clip selection, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Uh, and yeah, this is not rocket science. At this stage, you usually have a general but vague idea of what you wanna make a video about because you played, let's say a whole bunch of raids or a whole bunch of PVP or whatever. 
and there's like a couple really funny moments that are stuck in your head that you somehow want to turn into a video. All you're going to do at this stage is just go through the footage and with a very, very rough video idea in mind, you kind of just scrub through the footage and very loosely select the clips. Anything that you want to use, you keep on the timeline. Anything that's just boring or you don't feel like using, you can just cut away, you can just throw away. This doesn't only apply to funny moments uh, in the game, by the way. This can be funny jokes that your friends have said, even when there was nothing going on on the screen. This process usually does take up a good amount of time because you have to sort of remember what the funny parts are and go through the footage again. For example, for uh, the undercover rating video that I recently released, I had like 30 hours of footage to go through because I spent 30 hours rating undercover. So if you have that much footage, which is completely normal, by the way, you can have less, but you can also have even much more. Uh, when you have that amount of footage for just one video, it usually really helps to just quickly make some notes next to the video files that you create on the same day, preferably right after playing. This is what I do. Let's say I played a raid and something really funny happened on a certain encounter. I'll not only name the footage uh, with the name of the encounter or the timestamp of the video of roughly where the funny moments happened, I'll also make like a text file with the same name that I can then open with sort of like timestamps of the funny parts. If I do this every time right after playing, I can just leave that footage on my hard drive for let's say a whole month and then later come back to it and then still easily pick out what moments I wanted to turn into a video. Something you can also do is to segment your recordings. Uh, this is something that I do a lot to help keep disk space somewhat of a, a non-issue. Let's say if I play the rate, I just click start recording and stop recording in between every encounter. This way my video files are split up in smaller files. So if there was only one encounter that was really interesting and worthy of a video, I can just keep that and delete the rest. It also helps out in Premiere because Premiere does not like really, really long video files. I once had a seven hour long file with three audio lanes and it took like five seconds every time I wanted to preview it. It was a pain to work with. And since then I've been splitting up my videos every hour or so at max and the performance has just been so much better anyway once i'm finally done with the clip selection and i sort of have on my timeline what i want to use this is where we get into the next stage of the video this is where we're gonna create the rough cut and this is where we're really gonna take the footage that we want sort of organize it in a way that we're gonna present it in the video but we're not gonna add any effects we're not gonna add any text we're not gonna do any complex editing and we might not even add extra cuts. There's no need, because here's the thing. If you just looked through all the footage and all the clips that you wanna use, everything that you wanna use in the video is still very fresh in your mind. It's like you just played it again. And with all that footage fresh in your mind, you probably know the best clips and what you wanna use. So now with that knowledge, we're gonna just really trim the fat. Before I begin though, I always make sure to make a copy of the timeline that has all this footage and then do the work in the copy. This way I always keep all of the original clips. And so if I ever decide to cut out something in this stage, but later into the edit, I remember that, hey, maybe I do want to use that one clip that I decided to cut out. I can always go back to the original timeline and then look for that clip. So the rough cut, what do we mostly do here? Well, this is really about creating a story. We want to take a look at the fun gameplay moments, like maybe the time where you got a good amount of kills or where you push somebody off the map in a raid, couldn't be me, I wouldn't do that, but that could be a funny moment, something like that. You take those moments and you combine them with the jokes in the voice chat. Now, oftentimes when you're playing, you're not playing with Americans' greatest comedians, right? You're just playing with a bunch of friends and oftentimes you'll find that the raw footage is kind of empty. Just look at this footage. There's not much going on. Even looking at the wavelength, it's kind of boring. Uh, we're not funny 24 7 we're just trying to complete these rates right and every now and then somebody says something funny and every now and then somebody uh, does something really funny on screen it's your job to sort of combine these moments you want to cut out all the interesting gameplay moments and kind of combine them with all the jokes that the guy said you'll see here that i'm mixing the orange and the rose colored audio lanes the rose colored audio lanes are the things that my friends actually said when we were playing this the orange audio lines are actually from a different clip half an hour earlier. But because the footage from half an hour earlier wasn't interesting enough, I was literally just standing in the tower. And because the voice comms of what's happening right now are also kind of dead, I can combine these two to get the best of both worlds. We have some interesting and perhaps funny dialogue between me and my friends, but we also have something interesting happening on screen. 
Of course, the trick is to mix these in in a way to where the viewers will not notice. And you can really get absurd with this to the point where you can basically alter the whole feel of a clip. Is there a joke that somebody said that you think was funny, but then nobody left and kind of felt that? Well, simply grab some audio from moments like 10 minutes or 20 minutes later, where people are actually laughing at something. You just take the things where they're laughing and put it under the joke where no one left. And now suddenly, because everybody laughed at that joke, that joke is suddenly funny. Yeah, I'm not oh, doing no. Aspire. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Nope. Listen, that is, the fucking, uh, nope. this is a September 18, you gotta do it. Tomorrow, yeah, sure. Tomorrow's what? what do you Sunday? Mean tomorrow, it is no, fucking wanna, not even 12. If you, if you wanna prepare, we gotta do we gotta do garden at fucking 800 light. No, I'm not gonna do yes. shit like that. <laughs> Shooting ads 40 times is not preparing. No, we gotta do Spire at 100 light. Yeah. Okay. That's we gotta do Spire with double primary and a letter fusion. Okay. I still feel like we need to uh, properly prepare for the next, you know. If you want to prepare, we gotta do we gotta do garden at fucking 800 light. No, I'm not gonna do <laughs> shit like that. No, that's not preparing. <laughs> we gotta do shooting ads 40 times is not preparing. No, we gotta do spire at 100 light. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We gotta do spire with double primary and a letter fusion. Spire takes like 20 minutes. All right. There's no way we fucked that up. This is of course a fairly cheap example. It's basically using your friends as laugh tracks to make the video flow better. But I wanted to pick this example because it shows you the power that split audio lane recordings have. Something that makes triple audio recordings even more powerful is the fact that you can squish the conversations together without having to have any visual cuts in the footage. You look at my videos and you'd think, hey, uh, that video is super overly edited. Uh, this guy is trying to have as many cuts as possible. But this actually couldn't be further from the truth. I actually try to have as little cuts as possible because I feel like if you're just cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting, there's never any build up to a joke. There's never any delivery. At least I feel that way. And it just feels a little more artificial. Instead, if you have the footage rolling in like one big go, it comes across more natural while actually being less natural. You simply take all the interesting audio and instead of just cutting it together and having like no dead space in between because can't have dead space, you just bring the conversation together closer without changing the footage itself. I'm just gonna show you the first minute of the video before I edited it and then also after the edit. Now, of course, after it's edited, there are also going to be some visual effects and some subtitles, but I want you to focus mainly on the audio and notice how there's barely ever a dead moment in the edited version. But then if you look at the unedited version, it's just, it's not even funny. You, you probably could not upload this on YouTube and expect a positive reaction. Thanks, you go ne next platform. So the trick is you never stand on the same platform with two people. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Right. Right. Let's do this, uh, let's do this quick. Everybody with swords out, you're all such pussies, dude. Jesus yeah, Christ. Fuck you, pussy. Everybody with swords out. Jeez. What, is, what has happened? Literally going to bed. What has happened? We used to be such a wholesome ray team and you know just having fun and now. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! What has happened to you? Wait, how did I just go through you? That's. All right, can you stop? I actually want to finish this raid tonight. Okay. I wasn't gonna do it, sleepy. God, you're such a pussy. Wait, there's three titans? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's what Thanks. I was saying. Thanks for the boost, bro! Holy shit, you're oh, going so far. Eat it. Alright, Frizy, yeah, I guess goes let's first. Die? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why do you die before you hit the water, what? Come on. Hello, hello. 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 <laughs> All right, let's go. This Basically, go ne next platform. So the trick is to never stand on the same platform with two people. <laughs> See, that, that's 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 the <laughs> those, two. those are two different people. Like everybody with swords out, you're all such pussies, dude. Jesus Christ, what has happened? We used to be such a wholesome ray team, and you know, just having fun, and now. <laughs> Uh, even Sleepy's pushing people off the map now. Wait, there's three titans? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Alright, Frizy, I guess go first. Guardian down. Wait, 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 wait. Why do you die before you hit the water, bot? Come on, let's go. Guardian down. 
Sleepy, come on, stop throwing. Hello, hello. <laughs> no one gonna res him? Come on, dude. Oh, I can do it myself, dude. Fuck it. What? It was close. That's 200 IQ. Down. I mean, look! Okay. Look where I'm just getting booped off. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why can't I use my Icarus dash? Like, the, the water makes no sense. So dumb how they make. <laughs> okay, okay, brother. <laughs> he actually whipped out the Bacardi. <laughs> As you can see, there's a clear difference in tone. Uh, there's a build up. There's a climax in the edited version. The fact that Sleepy grabbed the Bacardi as a result of getting pushed into the water is essentially fake. He uh, he already grabbed the Bacardi 30 minutes ago when he heard that he had to rape with me again. And I just used the audio of him grabbing those bottles and pushed it into that part to have sort of a climax. How funny would that be, dude? Bungie tweets out the world's first fire team. It's just us six with a fucking blank name. All just of us. Blank. And then our clan is blank too. <laughs> clan of blank. So funny, man. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm literally dying yeah, here of laughter. Really they take another drink, yeah. Sleepy. Wow. Take another drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he actually whipped out the Bacardi. <laughs> he is on crap. He actually did it. I'm mixing it with my fucking G Fuel now, you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Hope your heart fucking it's, stops. Uh, it's Don't fucking 12 p.m. It's almost 1 p.m. You know, and he's already grabbing the drinks. This is a big part of being creative for me. With the rough cut, you essentially want to tell a story. With little build-ups, little climaxes, funny jokes here, some tension here and there, and with three-lane audio recordings and gameplay, you can really go way further than if you're just stuck with a single audio or even a dual audio recording. With the rough cut, I basically decide the pacing of the video and decide exactly how it's played out. But I don't really commit to doing any heavy editing yet because I only really know for 100% what I want to keep once I have the rough cut ready. Because then I know what the video is going to look like from start to end, even if it doesn't really look good yet. This is really where you get to shape the video. This is basically where you decide how the video is going to turn out, what story you're going to tell and in what way you're going to do it. And once you've got that all done, it's uh, it's still not time to start the editing. Not quite yet, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. The first thing that we're gonna do, again, is duplicate the timeline so that no matter what we do in the future, our work is not gonna be lost. And then once we have another duplicate of our timeline, we're gonna split up the footage into small two to five minute segments and separate these over different timelines. I usually find natural points to cut the footage up for example, again, different encounters and raids or just entirely different games. I usually have all of those on a separate timeline because once we're going to start adding effects to all of these clips and like ordering it in the right way, uh, you want to have these things on different timelines to keep Premiere performing at its best because if you have a lot of stuff on the timeline that can seriously slow down the editor and it's just easier to keep track of things this way because your timeline doesn't look like a complete disaster. And once we've got everything reeled in, once we've got our different timelines with all our different parts of the video, we're going to start edit. Nope, still not. We're going to start fixing the audio first. If you look at some of these waveforms on the footage, you'll see that a lot of it is not very loud or well balanced. In movies or real life shows, it is OK for some voices of some characters to not be that loud, especially when the actors are further away from the camera. But in video games, almost everybody you're talking to is always talking into their mic. So ideally, you want everybody's audio to be sort of on the same level. Of course, you can have someone talk really softly or talk really loud in some parts of the video uh, without going too far off the median, because that can add some comedic effect. Uh, if we have to do boss, I guess me, Tyler, Sleepy. Why do you have a sword on? Why? I'm going to the mode thing, defending until meta I'm not talking about you, Reaper. I said why because Marco showed me off the fucking map. <laughs> hey man, don't don't be mad. Like his eyes are about to pop out of his skull. But usually, you want to keep the audio uh, around the same level. I usually have my audio lanes between minus eight and zero decibels. I never have it go above zero decibels unless there's like some bass boosted distortion effect on screen, and not even that much then. Because you never want to just ear rape your viewers. So, how do I balance all this audio? Well, I could just keyframe it. I could just go through all the audio and keyframe it to be 
uh, about the right level. And I've done that in the past, uh, but that's just a very painful process. So what I do now is when I have all the audio clips open, I just select them all and then I right click and then I export to Adobe Audition. And Adobe Audition is uh, like Photoshop, but for audio, basically. It allows me to polish up the audio and then go back into Premiere and never have to worry about the audio again. For the most part, at least, for the most part. There's still some things you need to do when you start adding music and sound effects, of course. So once I've got all my audio clips in there, there are three main things that I'll do to every single one. First up is to see if I need to remove some noise. Although with everybody using different mics and different setups, uh, that's not always required. Second up is to make sure that my audio is always between minus eight and zero decibels. And usually I just cap it out with a hard limiter of minus one decibel so that there's still some room to where you can have two audio lanes playing and it doesn't always clip. Uh, and the third thing that I do is that I always remove any noises such as mouse clicks, keyboard clicks, audio clipping, popping when somebody pops into the mic. It's a really, really bad sound. That's what I get rid of. And Audition is a really good software for that because Audition has a brush healing tool, which is similar to the brush healing tool in Photoshop. But instead of removing pimples, we can use it to heal audio. We can just brush over a mouse click and that mouse click will now be gone. I'm talking and I'll click a few times on the keyboard to see if I can edit that out. I'm talking and I'll click a few times on the keyboard to see if I can edit that out. Also, if you want to get rid of popping, like this popping, I'm popping into the mic, I'm popping off, dude. Then you can go to the bottom 200 hertz range, select that area right there and then just lower it by like 90 decibels and the popping is mostly gone. I'm popping into the mic, I'm popping off, dude. I'm popping into the mic, I'm popping off, dude. Don't overdo it though, because otherwise you get this really empty robotic voice effect. I'm popping into the mic, I'm popping off, dude. This is probably the most boring part of the whole editing process as you're literally just going through all the audio and doing the same thing over and over and over again. But I find it ends up saving a lot of time compared to just adjusting the sound manually with the pen tool and then just always messing around with it and getting annoyed by all the pops and the mouse clicks and the keyboard clicks and all that stuff. Audition is way more precise. Uh, it's essentially faster. It's just that you have to do all the audio clips for the whole video in one take, in one sitting, and it just gets kind of boring. But again, saves you a lot of time. So in the end, I think it's worth it. The only downside to this is that um, when you do this, uh, it creates a separate file for each of these voice clips, which can look really messy in your footage folder. So what I do is I create a separate folder for the audio. And then after uh, Edition and Premiere, create all those separate audio files. I just put those audio files in a map next to the footage so that I know where it is and I can just delete it after the video is done. Whew, that's a lot, right? That's a lot. And we haven't even started editing yet. Man, this video is going to take a lot longer than I thought it would. But with that stuff out of the way though, it is finally time to create the video. And yes, even for this part, I've got a couple of secrets off my sleeve. One thing, for example, is my separate timeline that I've been using on my other screen that you can't see with all my presets and effects and audio effects that I use a lot. It's just a timeline with only effects and sound effects and subtitle presets and all that stuff. And it's just sitting there on my second screen. And then and whenever I need something, I can just drag it from one timeline and drop it onto the other. I created this uh, myself after realizing that there's quite a few things that I use quite often for quite a couple of videos. Don't let me die, don't let me die. <laughs> Yeah, well, what can I name? The rest is up. Guardian down. Well, not. I'm dead. Warlock. I have minor is it on all the teeth that help. Guardian down. No, it, <laughs> it did not help. <laughs> uh, and I felt that it would be a waste of time to just recreate all those things every single time. So I've created an Adobe Premiere file and simply call it preset. There's a couple different variations, one for 4K, one for 1440p. And so every time I make a new video now, I just copy the project file and then change the name and then import the footage there so that I always have my presets and all my, my default things that I use on my second screen ready to go for when I want to start the editing process. The subtitles, for example, I have about 10 different animations of how they can pop in. You know, we've got a simple skill pop, a skill pop that's bigger, one that's even bigger. Then we've got this thing that wiggles. We've got one that 
starts at the top but then slides to the bottom with some motion blur we've got some uh, wiggling left to right wiggling top to bottom we've got some squeezing we've got little rotation going on you know we've got a lot of different ways that we can make this text pop in and i created these manually but all i have to do now is simply drag and drop them from the other timeline and so that i never have to worry about animating text ever again all that i have to do is change what the text is and i've got all of these animations for every different color that i want to use because i have six different colors of text that i use for up to six different players in the fire team and the same kind of goes for many of the visual effects something that i refer to as uh, the slap on effect some effects that don't require any masking or tracking or any advanced stuff stuff that you just kind of slap on like this for when someone is raging some red curves, some, uh, some, some sharpening, some emboss, you know, maybe a little bit of twitch to where it shakes a little bit. Or when somebody is really sad, you know, some blur on the sides, a little bit of black and white, a little bit of grayed out. Maybe you want to add some black bars. We've got, you know, a preset for that as well. Or maybe a shake effect when someone dies, like an impact. We've got plenty of different impact presets. And these things usually go hand in hand with audio effects. For dying, I have a whole bunch of different dead sounds that I usually mix and match to not have every dead sound the same. A whole bunch of sound effects just layered on top of each other for different situations when people die in different ways. Because if you just add the dog toy squeeze sound effect that I use a lot when people die, just like that, without any video effects, without any additional effects to like uh, make it a little bit punchier and crunchier, it just sounds very dry. Nobody is superior until you start uh, the encounter. That's not true, I'm always superior. Wow. Actually, in this case, I did not oh, get shit. the superior. <laughs> Fuck, I went. Nobody is superior until you start the encounter. That's not true. I'm always superior. Wow. Actually, in this case, I did not oh, get the shit. superior. <laughs> Fuck, I went. There's a difference there, right? And those are the things that you only really notice once they're not there. And you'd think that this takes a lot of time to do, but because I can just drag and drop and then tweak it a little bit here and there, it's not that much extra work once you have it set up. So, with the video roughly laid out the way I wanted to, and with my video and audio effects ready, I simply go over the footage and I start to polish it up, make it a little bit shiny where needed, add the text that I want to use, of course, add some music, because music can really help build out the scene a little bit more, um, and just build out the video like that. It's of course important not to overuse your second timeline. You always want to make sure that every video has uh, unique sound effects or unique effects that you haven't used before, because otherwise every video starts to feel the same. And I feel that even though I'm trying to keep things very varied in my videos, there's even some criticism that, you know, some effects that I use, I overuse. And I kind of agree. And this is something that I'm currently looking at to try to vary it up even more. For the more complicated special effects, such as these character zooms where the, the screen just follows one character, or even the montage that I made in my Zero Hour video, I usually do all that stuff in After Effects. Now obviously, again, I cannot teach you what all the buttons do uh, in After Effects in this video. That's not what this video is about. But if you do want to learn it, uh, videocopilot.net has some fantastic tutorials that have taught me how to use the software as well. And I really do suggest that if you're serious about video editing, you have to learn After Effects or another compositing software option. It just opens up the door for so many cool things that you would otherwise never be able to get inside of Premiere alone. Like this blur effect in my montage. This is actually a depth of field based effect. In After Effects, I created a depth map and then used that information to create a realistic blur. Same with the light that sort of comes behind the characters. All that this is, is just a layer with a scion color. But because I used a depth map to determine the opacity, it looks like the light is coming from behind. Another example would be these floating rocks that I have in this montage. Pretty cool, right? Some, some 3D rocks that sort of pop up from the ground. That's done with 3D motion tracking. Maybe you want to have some text behind objects. This is possible in Premiere, but After Effects Pen 2 options are so much easier to use. I would never do this in Premiere. And also, just to give one more example, this. Uh, this footage was recorded in 60 frames a second. I do not have some magic equipment to record games at 500 frames per second to make slow motion footage look good like this. So how did I make these characters move so slow 
without creating weird artifacts that you get from pixel frame blending. Well, I simply masked out the characters on the first frame, then used the positioning and pin puppet tool to move and warp the masked out characters uh, to match them with where I wanted them to end up. Then I masked out a clean frame from the background without the characters and used motion tracking and warping plugins to make that match the motion that was in the original shot. And now my characters can move as slow as they want without any artifacting because it's actually just one picture. This thing is just one picture, just one picture moving. But you don't really see that, right? That's the magic of After Effects. That's the stuff you can do with the software. Now these of course are extreme examples uh, and more often than not, after Effects just allows you to make things look a lot more clean than you can in Premiere. Usually, I go to After Effects to do things that I could have done in Premiere, but with After Effects it's just faster, it's more reliable, plugins don't take as long to load for the most part, they don't take as long to preview, it's more stable, and it's easier, because you have so much more control of what you want. I know I'm starting to like, nerd out over this software, but I'm just trying to convince you that if you're serious about video editing, and you're serious about getting your foot in the door in the YouTube world, editing is extremely important. And After Effects just takes that to another level, if you're decent at it. You don't even have to be good, you just have to know the most basic things and go from there. I look up tutorials for After Effects for all of the things that I'm trying to do. I just know how the software works, alright? Just want you to know that. Now once you get the more complicated effects in, once you get uh, the text well, once you have the flow of the, you know, the, the video the way you want, and once you have those slap-on effects added on top of that, you're basically looking at a nice two to three minutes of content. Just do that four more times for all the other timelines. Uh, just the same process over and over until you have a complete video. At the end, you're gonna take all these parts and just copy and paste them on one master timeline. You're gonna render that out and you're gonna have a really good video, hopefully. And don't worry about your first video being the best one or something like that, right? My first Destiny 2 video looked awful. There's almost no effects there. The audio mastering is terrible. The subtitles couldn't be more obnoxious. It's, it doesn't look good, right? This does not look good. The video may have been funny for some people, but it's not a good video if you look at it technically. But that's where I started with. And to get better, you just have to keep making videos. After a video is uploaded, take a look at what you like and what you don't like and try to improve on it next time. That's the only way to get better. And also don't be afraid to take stuff from uh, content creators that you watch or that you like. Everybody's gotta start somewhere and usually the best way to learn is to try and copy something that somebody is doing exactly in the same way. And once you can do that, you can then start to add your own style to it. Everybody on this platform is taking things from other creators that they like and applying it to their own video. Nobody is original. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Just get started get making these videos. And you might not see it immediately, but after you've done a couple, you can look back at your first video and already start to see things that you should have done better. It's like a never ending cycle of improving. And that's basically the end of this video. This is how I make my videos. Now this might have not been something that completely blew you away. It wasn't gonna be a magic, do this thing and you'll be a YouTuber. It's just uh, a lot of work, a lot of practice and a lot of mistakes made. God, these older videos look so bad, holy shit. But hey, that's the good part, right? Because if it's not magic, that means you can do it too. Thank you for watching this whole video. Thank you for watching my Destiny content, which I'll continue with very soon, in a couple weeks. I'm still sort of on a break. And hopefully you picked up something from this video that uh, you can use yourself as well. As always, guys, see you later.